Hey YouTube, welcome back. Our winner of the Amazon Fire 7 tablet for the 250 subscriber mark was Gene L. That was sent out. He confirmed he did receive that. So thanks for watching, Gene. I hope you enjoy this video. Do you have a boring dashboard? Do you have the stock dashboard? Does it look like this? Would you like it to look like this? I've been working with Home Assistant now for about 18 months and the whole time I just use the normal dashboard that they give you, the little switches and the nonsense cards and layouts. A couple weeks ago, I went over to a friend's house and he showed me his dashboard. It looked way nicer. So I sat down, figured out how to do it and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. First thing you need to do is you need to get hacks installed. If you don't have that installed, I'll throw a link up in the cards. I did a video where we installed that. So get that set up. And then you're gonna wanna download mushroom cards from Hacks. Once you've got mushroom cards downloaded and installed, then we can go ahead and start setting up a new dashboard. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add another dashboard to Home Assistant, because you don't wanna do this with your main dashboard, right? You've probably spent a lot of time with your existing dashboard, even though it might not be what you're looking for, it might be a little ugly or whatever, you still want that dashboard to be functional, right? So we'll add a dashboard. Once you've added a dashboard, then we're ready to start adding mushroom cards. Let's take a look through my dashboard. I'll show you guys how I set mine up to give you guys some type of an idea. I prefer to set them up by room, but being that I have so many devices in my house though, simply setting things up by room just wasn't quite gonna do it for me. So I wanted everything to fit on a single screen on mobile without having to scroll. So in order to accomplish that, I broke the house up by floor. So I have main floor, second floor, and basement. And that allowed me to accomplish that goal. Long pressing one of the cards for any of the rooms will toggle the main light for that room. And if that main light is on, it'll also change the color of the icon on that card so you can easily see that. In addition, if the room has a temperature sensor in it, I've also added the temperature and humidity to the top of the card for the room. And if there are any water leak detectors in that room, then I've added those as well. And there are automations behind the scenes. We can go into that in another video. Uh, but those automations then will send me notifications to my phone if there's any water leaks detected. All right, so let's dig into this a little bit deeper then and show you guys exactly how I've got everything put together. All right, so some of this I'm gonna speed up so that you guys don't have to sit here and watch me go through all this stuff in real time. But first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change that home tab, get rid of the name, just put an icon up there. Now we're gonna add a mushroom chips card. Change the alignment of that so it's in the center. Get rid of that default entity. And we're gonna add the weather. And we'll turn on the conditions and the temperature. And now you've got a little weather forecast card up there. Click on that, there's your forecast. Then we're gonna add another mushroom template card. And we'll get rid of that icon. We'll get rid of how are you. And we're gonna set the tap actions to no action so that if you accidentally do tap on it, you don't get an error message. All right, so we're gonna add a horizontal stack. And then we're going to add a mushroom template card And we're gonna change the icon of, for that to floor one, since this will be the main floor of the house. We'll change the primary information to be main floor. And the secondary information, we're gonna display the temperatures for the various temperature sensors that are on that floor. There'll be a link in the description to the forum post that'll have all of the code in it for you, so you don't have to try and pause this and type it all in. Tap action will be navigate. And for the navigation path, you can put in whatever you want there, just remember what it is. Hold action and double tap will both be no action. Change that to vertical layout. Now we're gonna add another template card. And we're gonna change the icon on this one to floor two. 
change the primary information to second floor. Get rid of the secondary information that's in there. And again, we'll paste in temperatures for second floor sensors. Change the default layout to vertical. And tap action for this will be navigate as well. And again, put in whatever you like. Just remember what it is. Hold action and double tap will both be no action. And then we need to add tabs that we're gonna to navigate to. So for the icon, we'll use home floor one for main floor. And then because we put main in there, that'll be the URL, so main. And then we'll go ahead and add floor two. And we'll go back to our home view and we click on main, takes us over here. And so now we're going to add a card again. And this is going to be a vertical stack. And the first card that we're going to add here will be a title card. And for the title, we'll put main floor. And we're going to add another card to the stack. And this will be a mushroom chips card. And we'll get rid of that default entity and we're going to add back chip. So that'll return us back in our navigation. There we go. And then on our second floor, we're gonna do the same thing. We'll add a vertical stack. We'll add a mushroom title card. Set that to be second floor. And we'll add a mushroom chips card with the back button. Now we've got our basic navigation. So then on the main floor, we'll add a card and we're gonna add a horizontal stack. And the first card will be a template card. And we're gonna set the icon to knife and set the entity to be the main lights in the kitchen. We'll set the icon color to be template code so that that changes color, whether the light is on or off. Set that to vertical layout. Tap action will be navigate. And again, you put whatever you want. So mush kitchen we're gonna use. The hold action will be toggle. That's gonna to toggle that main entity when you hold the button like that. We'll edit that, we'll add another card and we'll add another template card and we'll set this one up to be the dining room. So entity for this one will be the main lights for the dining room. And we'll change the icon to be food so it looks like a dining room. We'll change that icon, we'll get the icon color code, change the kitchen lights to dining room. Change primary information to dining room. Get rid of the secondary information, change it to vertical layout. And again, our tap action will be navigate and we'll call this mush dining. And the hold action will be toggle, which again, will toggle the lights in the entity. So now when we long press that, it'll turn the lights on and off in the dining room. And then we're gonna just create the views for kitchen and dining room. And we're gonna add those main title cards. So we'll speed this up a little bit here. There we go. So we've got our kitchen and dining room cards all set up. So now we can start adding stuff to them. So on the chips card, we're gonna add a couple of entities. The first one is going to be for the temperature. So I have a temperature sensor in the kitchen, so we'll set that up. And then we will add the kitchen humidity as well. And 
And the last one that we want to set up is going to be a template card. I have water leak sensors. So for the template card, for the entity, we'll set that to be the leak sensor. Uh, and we'll set the temperature to be orange. And we'll set the humidity to be blue. And so now we'll view the code. This is the easiest way to set up this template sensor. So you can see the entity is the water leak sensor for the kitchen sink already. So now for the content for that, which will be the name that's displayed next to that, we're gonna enter that code. If there's no leak, it'll say no. If there is, it'll be in caps, yes, with an exclamation point. And then we're gonna set the icon to change whether or not there's water or not. So right now there's not, so it's water off. If there is, there'll be water. And then we're gonna set the icon color the same way. So if there's water, it'll be red. If there's no water, it'll be blue. So pretty easy to glance at it and know if you've got a problem. And then we're gonna set the tap action and the action for that will be more info. There we go, perfect. So we've got temperature, humidity, and water leak. Then we're gonna add a card and this will just be a mushroom light card. So for entity, we'll set that to kitchen lights. And the name and the icon are both fine. We'll change that to vertical layout. We'll add a brightness control because that is a dimmer. And when it's off, we'll collapse those controls. The tap action, it will be toggle and the hold action will be more info and we'll set the double tap to no action. So you can turn it on and off, adjust the brightness. You see how that's orange? I don't really care for that. So let's change that. So down here on the bottom, we're just gonna use a card mod. So the code for that will be in the forum post as well. I set that to yellow, I prefer that. On the main floor display, we'll go ahead and add a couple of temperatures for the temperature sensors on the main floor. And for these, we wanna use template cards because we wanna label them so that we know which temperature is in what room. So again, the code for this will also be in that forum post as well. And we'll set the icon color to orange. We'll set the icon to thermometer. And tap action will be more info. And we'll set the others to no action. Then we'll edit the second template. Set this one to be the temperature sensor in the parlor. And the same. MDI thermometer for the icon. Icon color orange. And then the content will be code to display that. Tap action more info, hold action, and double tap both no action. Save that. And there we go. So now when we're in the main floor, we can see the temperature in a couple different rooms. The next thing that might be nice to know is how many lights are on on the main floor. So just go ahead and type something into the subtitle field to get that to show up. 
So then we'll go and view the code, delete out what we typed there. And then we're going to put in a bunch of if statements to check the condition of the lights on the main floor. So this code again will also be in that forum post so that you guys don't have to pause this and try and copy paste all that. But basically all we're gonna do is we're gonna check the state of each of the lights, count the number of them that are on, and then we're gonna display that in the subtitle field so that we've got a nice pretty dash. Main floor tells us how many lights are on. And then you can see as we turn lights on and off, that changes. So zero lights on, one light on, two lights on. There's many different ways to accomplish that. You can count the number of lights and switches by area. Uh, my entities, unfortunately, are pretty disorganized, so I chose to go through and list out all the ones that I wanted to be part of that. All right, so those are the basics. You can just keep expanding from there. Take a look at this transformation from my old dashboard to my new dashboard. Here's the old one. It's a big mess, just a bunch of switches on it, hard to read, no navigation. And here's the new one. You can drill into all kinds of stuff. Icons light up if things are left on or turned off. Tells me how many lights are on on the various floors. Temperatures are displayed, easy to see. It's really a much better dashboard. Here's my office. Paul V9286, you are the winner of Amazon Fire 10 tablet. Please go ahead and comment on this video with your email address so that I can reach out to you and we'll get this shipped out, assuming that you are in the United States. For those of you that have not yet won, when the channel reaches 750 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away another Fire 10 tablet and a wall mount for it so that you can put this on the wall in your kitchen, your bedroom, wherever you'd like to put it. They're great. Got one on the wall in the kitchen and the master suite here. Love them. All right, so for the giveaway, for that 750 subscribers, what do you have to do? You need to subscribe to the channel, you need to comment on the video, and you need to like the video. Once the channel reaches 750 subscribers, the winner will be chosen randomly from the comments on all the videos. So make sure that you comment and like, subscribe. That's how you're gonna win. Rules, you need to be in the continental United States, the lower 48. International shipping is just not gonna happen with export and tariff laws and all this kind of stuff, I apologize. My contest, my rules, good luck, I hope you win. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned, I hope you enjoyed this video. Tell your friends, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, help channel grow. The larger the channel grows, the easier it is for me to make videos for you guys out there. So help me out and we'll see you next time.